Hi, I'm Samantha from Dance Parent 101 and today I'm going to show you how to sew ribbons onto ballet shoes. You will need ballet ribbons, ballet shoes, thread, and sewing needle, scissors and matches or a lighter. So when you get your new ribbons, what you want to do is first, if they have started fraying, give them a cut. If you've only got normal scissors, give them a cut on a diagonal. This will help them to stop fraying. But if you do have scissors such as these, um, give them a cut still along the diagonal, but it will help the threads to stop fraying. We don't want them to get caught on anything as we're doing our work right now. Now we want to, when you get your ribbon, you're probably going to be given ribbon in one big roll like this. And what you need to do is cut it into four even pieces. So make sure it's all the same way. Okay, so got it our edge up here. Going to cut that. And then you're going to want to do the same again with each piece. So now I've got two for one shoe. And I have another two for the other shoe. Next we need to get our needle and thread ready. So I'm just going to, I'm using white cotton because I didn't have any light pink. So as long as it's a light color that kind of matches your shoes, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so once you've got your needle and thread all ready, you've got your shoe and you've got your ribbon cut, we need to work on one end. And what we need to do is we wanna make sure that this end when it's in the shoe doesn't start to fray because then your sewing will come undone and your ribbon will come off. One way you could do that is by burning the edges. It makes it kind of go a bit plastic because of the material these are made out of. And you could fold over the burnt bit, but when I find that when it is burnt and you're sewing, it's too hard to sew through. The other idea might be that you burn it and you just sew it straight into the shoe, but I find those burnt edges can then hurt your feet or irritate your feet when they're in the shoe. So I prefer to fold the ribbons over at the end and the way you do this is you just fold it over and fold it over. Now if you do have a shinier side on your ribbon you actually want to have your fold going into the shinier side so I can't really tell much of a difference maybe the other side is a bit shinier so you want to fold into the shinier side because when you put it into the shoe that shiny side will be the part that goes around your child's leg but Honestly, I can't tell the difference. Then you need to work out the placement. If you have a brand new shoe and you haven't yet done up this, fantastic. Don't do it up just yet. Wait until you've put on the ribbons. It's much easier to sew ribbons on without your edges being all tightened and gathered like that. But ours have been worn before, so they are, they are tightened for my daughter's foot. So it's all good, it just makes it a bit harder. Okay, so to find the perfect placement, we need to bring this heel down and fold it over. Now, wherever the fold is, is where you want to put your ribbon. Now, it doesn't matter if it goes a bit in on that, if it's all the way out, just in that general location is a good, good indication of where you want it. Now, you can put your ribbon straight up, but I like to angle mine slightly because then it goes around the shape of the foot. Now mine has slightly come undone with all that talking. I will just fold it over again. I'm just going to line that up again. Okay, take my needle and thread and I'm going to go through this top corner so that I can kind of secure the folds that I made. And you also want to then, I've already got my knot, so that's great, but I want to go through, around through it one more time so I can create an extra knot and a really good hold there for my ribbon. So I'm gonna go through there and I'm just gonna pull that tightly and really make a knot there. Okay, and so now I'm going to go across the top here and just go make a regular stitch. I'm gonna go back over my stitch. I have no idea what type of stitch this is called. 
it's the back and forward stitch, I don't know. Okay, and then you go back again and now you're going forward. So you go back over what you just did. Now, my cotton is getting caught in all the fibres and you just want to try and make sure there's no big loops because it'll loosen the ribbon. The other thing that you want to make sure, and that's the problem I'm just having now because I've got a really small stitch to do, is that you're not going right through your shoe. You can see there, I haven't gone through the leather at all. I'm just going through this kind of canvassy material on the inside of the shoe. And I do that by using my, the back of my finger here, I feel, and I can feel that it's gone through a lot of layers. And it just takes, I guess, a bit of practice to, to know that it's going through all those layers. I don't do these a lot, but I guess I've just done them so many times over the years since I was a dancer and for my girls that you just sort of get practice and used to it. Okay, so I've gone across the top here and now I'm gonna go down. The other thing is that I use my nail to push the needle through. Um, you might want to get a thimble to do that. Now, did I go through? I have got a bit of pinching in the leather, but no, I didn't go through, so that's okay. And because it has gone through maybe some of the fibers of the leather, it um, caused the cotton to bunch a little bit. And it didn't go through the edge of the ribbon, that's okay, so I'm just going to go up there to make it go through the edge and pull that down. And now, so I've got a line across there, I'm going down, now I'm gonna go down the other side, the bottom side of my ribbon. And going in and forwards, and going back again, and then going forwards across that. And you can see how I'm holding that ribbon down with my other thumb. Sometimes your ribbon might get caught. Always make sure you untangle it, okay. We're on the home stretch now. We're gonna go in this corner and up. We're aiming to come up halfway through and I did. Oh no, I didn't, it was very much closer. Just making it the, sure at the back that I didn't go right through because it felt like I went through something a bit harder that time. Now I'm gonna go back into the middle and come up here and that's going to be our last stitch. Now I'm going to tie my knot. Something else that I didn't do this time, and I should have, but I didn't, is that when I got up to that end, I probably should have done another knot, just in case any of the stitches do come undone. Now, my knot has ended up a bit funny. That's okay. I'm just going to cut that off. I believe it helps make that knot a bit more secure. And we have one side done. And now it's on to the other side. So just again, looking at that placement, I haven't actually sewn it into this outer edge gathering here to the bias on the outside. I have not sewn it into the bias. I have actually sewn it underneath the bias so that it comes up with a nice line on the leg. So I prefer, that's the way I've always been taught and I prefer to do it on the actual lining rather than on the bias or gathering around the edges. Okay, let's do the other one. So choosing which side I think is shinier, maybe this side and folding it in one, two. And I forgot to, this time I've forgotten to put a knot on the edge there. So I will show you how to make a knot this time when you're actually sewing. Okay, so we fold it over. Because we've got one ribbon in there already, yes, it is important to fold over and see where it ends up, but it's also important to get two ribbons that are opposite each other, okay? So we wanna put it on the angle and then we wanna kinda look and say, okay, is that going to be even? Yep, it looks pretty even to me. Now I've got it on the angle going forward. And this time I might actually flip the shoe out that way, make it a bit easier. Okay, so I flipped it out and I've got my thread and needle and I'm going to just go up. Now you have to be careful this time and this is why I don't always like doing it. Got to make sure there's a little bit of extra there. Then bring it around and go through. And then when it gets to the end, go very slowly, bring it through and you make a knot. Okay, and so that will be knotted. If you want to cut off those extra lengths later, you can, 
Now I'm going to make a second knot here and going through that again. There we go. Now, I am going to cut off those edges right now because they might get in the way when I'm sewing. Okay. This whole time I've had my hands really tightly down on that fold so that it doesn't come out. Now I'm gonna go do my forward and back movement. So I'm going forward. Now I'm coming back into the middle of that stitch, coming back. And I'm going about the same length in front of that stitch on the other side. Now I can feel that it went through a lot of layers. Did I go through the leather on the other side? No, I did not, which is great. Pushing it up. This is sometimes why you need a thimble and not just your nail, pulling it through. And again, it's got a little knot here. Just make sure the knots come out. And now I'm not pressing down so hard because the fold has been sewn on one side and it's pretty much staying in place. Oh, my ribbon did funny things at times. Okay, and we wanna get it into that corner. Okay, I haven't picked up the ribbon at the end there. That is okay. Because what I'm going to do now is I'll go back up and through the ribbon, making sure I go through all those three layers of that fold. And now we wanna go down because we're creating a rectangle kind of shape probably went a bit too far. I wanted to kind of come up in the middle, but it didn't do it. That's okay, because we will go back and through the middle. Now, another reason you're going, starting to see my thread get caught quite a lot, it's because this canvas is actually stuck onto the leather with glue. So each time it goes through, it's coating, I guess, my, my thread in a little bit of glue and it just makes it get a little bit sticky and catches. So if yours does that, don't worry, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just what we are sewing through. Okay, pulling that up again, it didn't really come through the edge there. So, and I don't like how that bunched up there because I don't want it to create an edge that hurts. So I'm not going to pull that one too tight. What we do want to do on this edge though, is we want to make a little knot so that if our sewing at any other point comes out, well, there's a little knot here holding on the ribbon and your dancer will thank you when they're on stage and worried about their ribbons coming undone or falling out because that's what dancers do before they go on stage sometimes. Okay, so we're going across the bottom now. We're going across the bottom. Nice, try to make them as neat as you can kind of stitches. There we go. And now we've got to that edge. I'm gonna go down and up. You can feel that I'm going through a lot of layers there. Okay, it didn't go through the leather, which is good. And then one more just to get back to that starting corner. Again, I had to use my nail. Now, it's really gotten caught on something this time. The thread might have been a bit of glue from the canvas and the leather, I'm not sure. Just use your fingers to help it go through. And then making a knot at the end. So going through once and through one more time. Okay. And it's all sewn on. Isn't that great? Yay! We've done our done our ribbons. Okay, so they look as though they're popping out of the shoe rather than being attached to that edge there, which creates a better look, I feel, on your foot when you're wearing um, flat ballet shoes. Um, there may be a different way of doing it with point shoes, and I know lots of people have their own individual ways of doing it with point shoes, but with leather flat ballet shoes, that's one of the best ways to do it. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that these edges don't fray, and we're going to want to heat them with either a match or a lighter, but before we do that, we have to actually put them on our child or on ourselves to see what length we actually need because these are going to be probably too long. So the next step is to try them on my daughter and then we will um, cut them and we will light the edges and we'll do that next. 
Hi, so Sydney has finished her first recital, which she didn't need her ballet shoes for, and she's back home now, and we're going to put these ballet shoes on and work out the best length for them. So she does have a preference for each foot. So this one is that foot there. I am going to quickly do her shoe. So one over, one over. This is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets a bit tricky because you don't want to have too much, um, but you want to have enough. And I'm going to say about that much is probably perfect for me to be able to do a knot. So I'm going to cut them there. And they will, because she's got a preference for each foot and because of the way that we tie them, um, they will actually be two different lengths. So are we happy with that, Sydney? Are you happy with it? That length? Because once it's cut, it's cut. Okay, so that one's cut and I'll take that off and we'll do the same with the other one. So bring your foot over here. So again, over and around. And then that one's just gonna come to here and this one is going to come around the back and I will be tying them at the back here. So we want about that much extra on there. And so I will cut them here. Now you do want to cut a tiny bit longer as well because of the next stage. These will fray. So the only way they're not going to fray is if we either put, you can put um, clear nail polish on the end to make them not fray, because that sort of plasticizes them or makes them go hard, or you can burn them. Ideally with a lighter, we don't have a lighter, so I'm going to use some matches. But somebody in my family took the matches somewhere, so I've got to go find them now. I found them. Here we go. Okay, so all you want to do, and it's not too dangerous, but you don't, and it's not too dangerous, is that you just want to get the flame on the edge of there, and you're going to burn it. You don't actually want to, you're just melting it. You don't really want to burn it. So just get the heat on the edge there. Okay, and that one's done. I haven't actually burnt it, because you don't want to really get a burnt look to your ribbons sometimes happens but we're going to try our best and not get a burnt look okay so let's go to the other one and as you can see on my fingers i've got all makeup from doing makeup today well that one went straight away so we want to just get the edge of the flame and we want to melt it we want to melt that edge and it's gone all straight from where my zigzags were okay and I'll try and use the same flame. I don't think, let's see how long it's gonna last for this one here. No, it's coming too close to my fingers. As I said, a lighter, it's much easier, but I will honestly tell you, I think with the last ones, I didn't have any matches or a lighter, and I actually used the flame from our stove. It just needs to be something that's going to heat it up enough to melt the edges. Okay, so that one's done. And the last one, we just want to melt the edges. I've had to use a match for each one. Okay, but it did it for me. That one was getting a bit close to it and to the actual flame and was starting to turn color, but there we go. And that is how you finish off your ballet ribbons for your ballet shoes. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial today on how to sew ballet ribbons onto ballet shoes. And if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm doing lots of different tutorials for parents and for dancers on all different things all the time, especially as they come up. My daughter needs these particular shoes for her recital tonight. So I hope that goes well and we will see you soon. Okay, bye. <laughs>